Hello again, audience. Um, this is a discussion about time. Past and future are worlds we can never inhabit. We live of necessity in the present. But physicists and philosophers with very different outlooks from Einstein to Derrida claim the present is an illusion. Is time not a river at all, but instead a static dimension? Are we deluded by experience into imagining that the present is real? Or are Einstein's space-time universe and Derrida's attack on the metaphysics of presence fundamental errors? Um, and here we have a very illustrious panel to discuss this complex and fascinating theme. We have Julian Barber to my right. Julian is a British physicist whose research focuses on quantum gravity and the history of science. I have here on my far left is Emily Thomas, who's a historian of the philosophy of time based at Durham University. And she works on various ideas from the nature of time to the relationship between philosophy and travel. And she's the author of Absolute Time. And here immediately on my left, I have Tim Maudlin, who's a professor of philosophy at NYU um, and a world leader in the field of the philosophy of physics. And he's the author of the philosophy of physics, space and time. And the crucial question I'm going to pose now is, is time an illusion? And I'm going to start with Emily Thomas. Thank you, Emily. Thank you very much. OK, so the idea that time is an illusion is something that philosophers have wondered about for two and a half thousand years. The idea that time is just an appearance and not just time, that change is just an appearance was worried about back with the pre-Socratics. What is quite new, relatively, is the idea that now, that the present moment might or might not be an illusion. So I think that about 100 years ago, people who thought that time was real conceived time to be static, a kind of block universe in which past, present, future are all real. And they saw time as kind of like a fourth dimension of space. So in the same way that in space you can move in any direction and no direction is privileged, I think people thought the same about time. And there were various reasons why that was so. So things like timelines had become really popular. They were invented in 1765. The very idea of plotting events on a timeline is something that's quite new. And as soon as you start to think about events on a line, you have something that's static. A line is something that doesn't move. And, and I think that's one of the things that led people to think about time as a static dimension. What you then get in late 19th, early 20th century is an absolute rebellion against this idea. So people like the Henry Bergson in France, and, and Arthur Eddington in Britain began saying, no, no, if you think that, there's, that time is just like space, then it means that there's nothing special about the present moment. There's no now that's ever moving, ever flowing forwards. You just have moments of time spread out and there's nothing special about now. And they really disliked that view. They thought that on the contrary, there is something really special about the present, that we feel time flowing and moving forwards. And, and that people who think about time as being static and the present as just being an illusion, that they're just missing out on this fundamental feature of the world. Right, so I think this is how this debate got started, whether or not the present is an illusion. I think it all kicked off about 100 years ago. Brilliant. Thank you. That's very helpful as background to this debate. Um, Julian, I want to ask you the same question. Is time an illusion? Julian Barber. The experience of time is definitely not an illusion. Uh, that, I'm, that I'm quite sure of. I'm not mad. However, uh, I do think there is no such thing as time. Paradoxically, I would say that there are lots of things that I would be prepared to call instants of time or rather nows. Uh, and I would liken them, the simplest example, I always travel around with two triangles to explain my theory of the whole universe. <laughs> <laughs> and it works quite well. Uh, the, 
my concept of a now is just something which is structured and is in space. And the simplest example I can give of that, and it's amazing how much of mathematics comes from it, is a triangle. So my simplest model of a universe would be three particles which are in space, and let it be simple Euclidean space. And in any instant, they are at the vertices of a triangle. So that, for me, is one now. And here's another one. It's slightly different. And all, if you conceive of all possible triangles, that's a possibility space. And I would say these are all potential nows. And we are in one of them now, in an incredibly complicated, richly structured one. And I think it's the nature of that incredible rich structure which somehow or other the brain in passing from the structure which is in the brain and giving us a narrative in our consciousness leads us to believe that time is flowing. It's really all encoded in our brains now. But that's all there is, I think. If we had no experience of change, we would we just couldn't have the idea of time passing. But I actually, I don't so much like that word change as much as I used to, because it implies going forwards in time, that there's a direction to it. So I now prefer to use the word difference. These two triangles are different. And for me, the absolute minimum that you need to develop a notion of time which will stand scientific scrutiny is structures, spatial structures, which are different. And you need lots of them. So that's my opening pitch. Great, brilliant. Thank you, Julian. And I want to turn to Tim Maudlin now to pose the question again, is time an illusion, Tim? No. Great, you want to, you um, have more time to expand. So if you'd like. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of the everyday guy on the street in this debate for many purposes. Um, Amazingly, I can actually put bread on the table, going around giving lectures, uh, defending the thesis that time passes. Um, <laughs> sure it does. Uh, it, and, and, and to me, the question, the kind of interesting question, is why there's a debate about this at all. Um, let me make a couple quick historical comments. You can entertain the possibility that uh, things are illusions. Uh, Descartes very famously in the first meditation sat down to ask himself, what can I be absolutely certain about? And by reflecting on the fact that he dreams, he actually got himself to a state of saying, I'm not even sure there's an external world out there, right? Maybe it's all just in my head. So in a way, all of spatial reality in, a, in, in, in two paragraphs, Descartes could put his finger on questioning it. But it never even occurred to him to question time, right? Even if you're asleep and dreaming, time is passing, things are happening, um, the, the events happen in a certain sequence. Uh, the, it does go back to antiquity, as was mentioned, but the, the main culprit there was Parmenides, who had a very peculiar logical argument uh, to the effect that you can't coherently talk about the non-existence of anything. And it followed from that, since change was that which is not coming to be, he said, well, that which is not is incoherent, so change had to go as well. He had a certain kind of heroic valor in following this argument out to its end and believing it, um, but it is kind of crazy. Um, so my view is, sure, time is real. Time doesn't have the temporal structure of the world isn't what we thought it was. We learned from relativity that it has a different structure than you might naively think. But the claim that time is an illusion, I think, is, uh, is, is a very odd one. And I can't really think of any strong arguments to believe it. Great. Thank you. That's an excellent uh, sort of tr triumvirate of views that we've already got on the panel. And so I'm going to turn to 
I think we're going to talk a little bit more about concepts of time. Obviously, there are myriad concepts of time. Shakespeare talked about the whirligig of time. Marvell talked about time's winged chariot. Um, in slightly less poetic terms, we hear from science about time dilation, um, simultaneity, and so on. And I'm going to turn to one of these theories to sort of get us into the debate, which is the idea of the growing block universe theory, another not massively poetic sounding theory. Um, and I wondered, Emily, if you could put this in some context. What is growing block universe theory and why is it so fashionable at the moment? What's going on? So if you are a growing block theorist, you think that the past is real, but the future is unreal. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.